Welcome to Kingdom Outreach Radio. Thank you for listening to our daily Godcast. We're excited today just to bring you a portion of Kingdom Nuggets. We pray that it be a blessing to you. Have an awesome, awesome day. Hello, family. All believers, we're excited today. We're going to uh, go ahead and get going uh, real quick. We're going to be talking about Acts 5 today and also with uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Uh, also, we're going to really press in. We've been talking about meaning Acts and God's been really exposing to us what the intentional church uh, looks like. Uh, and I believe uh, this uh, one of our themes this year is going from the intentional, excuse me, going from the conventional church and stepping into the intentional church where we're being intentional about our lives and the things that God wants us to do in our lives. So we're excited today to continue on. I want to remind you uh, uh, to, to get on remind. Uh, if you haven't, just really press in with the word and let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do with us. Uh, the plate is right here. We are putting the plate out because I believe that the word of God is a uh, one of our seven core principles is the preponderance of scripture. The importance of scripture and being in the word of God uh, in this time is going to be very important to be able to distinguish righteous fruit and system fruit. Uh, that's going to be very important because it's, uh, there's a lot of deception that comes and uh, uh, the very elect can be operating in a systematic uh, artificial fruit. Uh, baskets and it can you can just be artificially spitting out this fruit from the system and not even be aware of it so that's why it's so important that believers uh, demonstrate and let God show us what demonstration means as, as the Holy Spirit shows us what that means so we're going to go on and continue uh, let's read in fact I want to read today we're going to, re- we're going to go let's go to Genesis uh, the third chapter I want to read there just a little bit just bear with me just a little bit here I just will be going a little bit slow now. I tell you what a great blessing today. Uh, Man, the word of God is just so rich and he's uh, really, really taking us uh, and pressing in our lives. And it's just a great blessing to see God moving uh, with his word. So we're excited uh, about that. Here we go, Genesis 3. And it says the fall. Now the serpent was more crafted than any other beast in the field. That the Lord God had made. He said to the woman. Did God actually say. You should not eat of any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent. We may eat of the fruit. Of all the trees in the garden. But God said. You should not eat of the fruit of the tree. In the midst of the garden. Neither you touch it. Lest you die. But the serpent said. The woman. You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of your eyes will be open and you will be liking God, knowing good and even evil, excuse me. So when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, remember that. So when she saw it was good for food and it was a delight to the eyes uh, that the tree was to be desired. So good for food, delight for the eyes, and it was good to be coveted or good to be desired. She took the fruit and ate and she gave some to her husband And they did ate. Then their eyes both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a linen cloth. Um, One of the things that really stood out for me here, and I want to talk about uh, this real quick, uh, righteous fruit and system fruit. Uh, A righteous fruit uh, is going to flow, flow through death. And I would even say simplicity where where you are simply allowing uh, God to have your life in such a way where you are operating not out of yourself, but out of dying, out of denying those things uh, that appear to be real. And a lot of times this this takes uh, uh, a real some real pressure because the enemy makes it kind of tricky sometimes. But the thing is here, you're going to always tr- it's always going to be a tendency to be deceived by many things. But right. You got to be able to see righteous fruit. Uh, it's going to bear the fruit of obedience. So righteous fruit flows through death and through obedience. And it brings simplicity. So I'm going to say it again. Righteous fruit, it flows through death 
and it's going to it's going to be you're going to be obedient. You're going to be listening. So you're not going to be going through your days and struggling, not listening to God and not being obedient. You know, you're not going to be just sinning and sinning and sinning. And you're not just going to be uh, struggling and struggling, and struggling when it comes to God. You're not going to you're going to be in tune and being obedient to God because uh, this is righteous fruit It's developing and it's bringing forth a simplicity in your in your life where the kingdom is priority. Uh, and there's another fruit we would call system fruit. Now, the system fruit is quite is a little tricky because it has some obedience, but it also has a little deception and it has self. So righteous fruit goes through, righteous fruit flows through death, through, uh, flows through death and it brings obedience and it, and it operates in obedience. The system fruit, it flows through self and it's obedient, but it has deception with it. And we would call it duplicity. That discipline would be uh, like a do like. Duplicity. That means it's double minded or double standard. And, and you know, the Bible said in James, a double minded man uh, is unstable in all his ways. And where he, he's developing this double standard where it's uh, the system is good. I want the system, but I also want God. And you bring those selfish desires and you tie it in with a little obedience and you have duplicity, that discipline of duplicity. And you also have a system fruit. I believe right now when we're looking at Adam and Eve in this passage, it was, it was easy to bring forth this systematic fruit because it was the, it was food to be desired. It was the light. It, it was it was good for the eyes and it was something to, to have to want. And right now, our hedonistic culture, it brings forth a lot of system fruit. Which we we want to be obedient to God, and we love we love God from the standpoint we know. But God's God's love, how He said, how how do how do I know you love me? By how you keep my commandments. Righteous fruit comes from you keeping the commandments of God, loving God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and keeping my truths and operating in me, and you know, and not allowing these things to overtake you. Uh, and develop this uh, system fruit. So when we're looking at Adam and Eve and Eve and, and both of those guys, they, they, they have developed this fruit and, and now they see things a little different. Now they see that they are naked. Now they're, they're a little bit away from God. They, they feel a little depressed. They feel a little down. They feel a little weird. They feel they don't feel really good because they're not as close to to God. They don't feel God. You know, and I know that right now they're in a mist where God is separated from them because they've allowed themselves to uh, bring forth this artificial fruit that comes from self desiring the eyes, wanting something. And our culture is tied up all in this and it does bring forth bring forth this thing uh, where we're going to have to be careful because our lives can be operated by a systematic fruit. And we can be calling it God and be missing God very easily. That's why it's so important to press into God and allow God to begin to show us what it means to deny myself. What does it mean to be able to put some things down and operate in simplicity? Uh, because the enemy wants to bring forth a duplicity where we're operating with obedience, but with a little bit of self added to it and a little bit of development, a little bit of system. And we add it together and we got systematic fruit. Uh, that brings forth a great deception. It looks good. It, it's wor it, it's worshipful. It, it's all those things that you would in, in, in a relationship, but it's got a double standard. And that's why this systematic fruit is so tricky. And it's going to take pressing into God to let him expose us. Let's go to Acts. Uh, also, Acts 5. We said we're going to be in Acts 5 and we're going to be in uh, Genesis 3. Real quick, we'll try to get there real quick. Uh, in Acts 5... We realize that this is a powerful story. You know, this is a book of Acts where they're they're all going. They're, they're they're real excited right now about what's happening to uh, the church. They are developing disciples. They're they're going around, and there there was this group, this two a husband and wife team, and they decided they want to give some money to the church. They was going to give uh, some money to the ecclesia, and they came in and they in their minds they said we'll we'll sell land and we'll give a piece of what we have, uh, and they did that. And when they came, they lied to Peter. Well, he lied first to Peter and said, this is all we got. This is what we got. But they already said they were going to settle land and give it to the church. But in their minds, they said, you know, we will we will hold some of this. Remember double standard? You remember duplicity? You remember where you, your, your mentality feels like 
of myself. I want this desire to have. And, and this system, it brings forth this systematic fruit that's going to allow us to have a double standard. See, the, and the Holy Spirit really uh, called it out. And, you know, so he, he speaks to Peter and Peter uh, tells him the Holy Spirit uses Peter and he drops dead because he lied to the Holy Spirit. His wife comes in three hours later. She drops dead because she lied to the Holy Spirit. See, the mentality was it wasn't that they had to give. I mean, they, they, it was, they didn't because they didn't give everything up. It was the fact is they didn't they didn't go after God with all their heart. And listen, let's not look at the death. Because that we can take that spiritually. Because any right now, see, if I'm not operating in simplicity, I can. Be, it's possible for me to have a mindset as if all the people down the generations have had in the past. Well, I'm going after God, but going after God from a systematic, artificial fruit factory, where my mentality is only on the system, and I'm going after this God, which this system will develop mammon, it will develop all types of hedonistic value system, and we can tie God right in, and it can look close to God, but the fruit, it be something else, and that's why it's going to be so important in this last days to press into God like you never have, and let the Holy Spirit begin to take you to the level he needs to take you to, so they died, so the whole community goes crazy because they're like, oh my God, what in the world's going on? And Peter and, and, and the guys, they continue to go forward. The, the town respects the men of God now and the Holy Spirit. And they go to Solomon's porch. They begin to heal. They begin to, they begin to speak into people's lives in the name of Jesus. They were serious about walking out the call of God. And they were going forward. And all of a sudden, you know, because they were going against the system, because they, they were uh, attributing this fruit, the enemy, well, anytime you go against systems, the enemy is going to come at them. In a mighty, in a mighty way, you know. One of the other things about I, I, I want to, I'm gonna do a separate teaching later about husbands and wives. I look at Ananias and Sapphira, both of those uh, people. They were, I mean, I, I don't know. Within three hour time, she comes in and she dies too. Uh, it's gonna be important that you be able to speak truth to your spouse, you know. And, and I say speak truth, and it could be the truth that you feel that you have, and that's okay. You can both speak truth. But what happens is you go through the threshing floor. And right now, the same thing is happening to the disciples. They're in there doing what, they're, what they know to be true. They're coming against the system. But guess what? The system is going to buck you. And it's going to put you in a place where it's going to come at you. And that's why you've got to be understanding that, that you've got to take and go through the threshing part of this. Because it's going to beat you in a way where it's going to challenge your flesh to want to do things it shouldn't do. And you're going to find out who you are in those challenging areas of your life. When you begin to get challenged, you're going to find out who you are and whether your fruit is, is systematic or your fruit is righteous, it's going to show through the threshing floor. Because if it's if it's a system, it's going to it's going to bear the bed for self and all you're going to do is operate in self. If it's righteous, and you're going to operate through there. So that means you're going to allow obedience to be the sacrifice and be what you need to be. So it goes on and all of a sudden they're ready to throw these men in jail. And this young man named Gamaliel said, wait a minute, if I love this part, he said, and if this be of God, guys, you're not going to be able to stop these guys. You know, you're not going to be able to stop them. He said, why not let them go on about their duties? And if it's of God, you won't stop it. That's one of the things I believe that we've got to understand. Speak truth in people's lives. But guess what? If you if it feels like that you uh, you feel like you got this thing together and you feel like you want to help somebody, allow the spirit to develop in such a way where you sit back and let God do what he wants to do and you develop while he's doing what he wants to do with it. And if it if it's of God, it will, Terry, if it's of God, it will not fail and God will, will do what he wants to do. And I believe that's a part of the threshing floor. We've got to be able to speak truth to our spouses. We've got to be able to speak truth to in these relationships that we're connected to. And we've got to be able to let God show us righteous fruit over this system fruit. Because system fruit is going to put us in a place where we're operating through looking through the eye gate. Operating through our vision, through, through looking at the hedonistic value system in all our relationships. And it's, it's going to throw everything off. 
But when you allow this righteous fruit from the kingdom of God to develop this simplistic lifestyle where you're allowing the kingdom to be first, you're not pressing in on your feelings. You're allowing God to show to take those feelings, take those things away, and you're allowing him to bring forth the pleasures of the kingdom. And you're not looking to get anything better like they did in the garden. You're not looking to upsize because you have everything you need. You have all the understanding, all the power you need, but the walking it out and going through the threshing floor of this process is what needs to happen in your life. So when we look at these scriptures here, I'm so excited uh, just to uh, understand that Gamaliel was a big deal in that chapter five of Acts. He said, you know what? Let it go. You're going to go through something. You're going to have to pray, but you got to let God be the one to take us through. If it be of God, you're not going to be able to fail. If it, And that's why I do not get so frustrated with things, because if it be of God, God is going to allow it to come to fruition. And that's what we got to be right now with uh, with this thing when, it, when we're talking about righteous fruit and system fruit. This is not for me to go around and try to uh, judge everybody's fruit basket, but God does give God does give us the ability to see fruit. But we've got to let God survey the fruit. We've got to let God take it and do what he wants to do with it and let him develop it. And it will go through the threshing floor. And if it be a God, it won't fail. So tonight, I, 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 I adore you. I pray that you will press in like never before because we're living in the perilous times. We're living in times where we never know what's going to happen. We never know when we're going to die. We never know when we're going to leave here. So right now, I would rather go live my life through death and die and be with the Lord and, and allow the Holy Spirit to uh, to operate in me such a way where when I'm on my last day, my last bed, I don't want to look back and say, man, I didn't do anything for the Lord. I did everything for this right, this system fruit. And right now, we not, and this system is caught up around mammon. And mammon will take my desires for it. And my desire will not be to please God. My desire will be to please myself and my eyes and my legacy. But God has called us to go after the cross. Christ was deity. He was every bit of God, but he put it down to die for us that we may have the tree, that we may have the, 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 the right to have life. And that's what God's called us to do this day. He's called us to wait a minute. I want you to understand is a, is the servant greater than his master? He's not the same way that quickening body that woke Jesus up. That same, uh, quickening power will wake us up and show us how to die, how to deny ourselves and how to focus in on being obedient to God that we will live the simplistic lifestyle. So this week, press into the word. Uh, we, we're excited. Let the word begin to speak into you. Listen to these videos. But listen, it's more about you getting in the word. Because when you get in the word of God, it's going to develop you. And it's going to make these videos a lot better. A lot better. See, there's many people right now, you can't look at the videos because you can't get into them. Why? Because you're not in the word. When you get in the word of God, the word is going to give you the manifestation of hunger and desire. And you want to hear the words and then some things will be unlocked and your mind will change. So we love you tonight. We pray that you have a great and awesome night tonight. We, we're, we're just excited for what God is doing. And we pray that you share some of these videos. You share some of these things. And you really develop a nature to go after God and to be able to understand what righteous fruit and understand what system fruit and knowing the difference be, to be able to see what your eye gate and understand and perceive with the sermon. So we love you tonight. You guys have a beautiful night. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to our daily Godcast. Just to bring you a portion of Kingdom Nuggets. We pray that it be a blessing to you. Have an awesome, awesome day. Welcome to the KOR Kingdom Outreach Radio. Thank you for joining us today at the KOR Kingdom Outreach Radio. If you would like to contact Pastor Charles Littlejohn, all you have to do is go to the KingdomOutreachCenter.com. That's KingdomOutreachCenter.com. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. If you would like to contact this station, Remnant Nation Radio, Go to newwinepouring at mail.com. That's newwinepouring at mail.com with one W. Thank you for joining us today, and until we meet again, God bless.
This is Remnant Nation Radio.